Hello, everyone, and welcome to the February 6th steering uh, public meeting. As a general reminder, these meetings are recorded and will be posted on the community's YouTube channel sometime later. And we all abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which essentially boils down to please be excellent to each other. Um, we do have four out of the seven steering members, so we can't actually uh, <laughs> hold the meeting. And with that, let us roll right into the topics. Um, to kick it off, uh, Christoph, you have an update regarding the annual reports. Yeah, so a couple of things. Um, the first is there's been a bunch of improvements to the generator. Um, uh, special shout out to Prankasagu who did a bunch of uh, stuff to kind of automate uh, a few more steps. Um, everything looks good for us to cut those and start pushing forward with um, annual reports for the 2022 year. Um, I linked an issue that we had for from last year as far as annual report feedback. Um, I wanted to ask if anybody else had had a chance to review it, if there's anything else that we want to change before um, we actually like cut and push out and report stuff. Uh, I can speak for everyone else. It's It's been a little bit since I looked at the issue, so we'll um, give it at least one more look over. But ideally, we do want to at least get the generator and the stuff out before Thursday, if at all possible. Yeah, I, I don't think that should be a problem. OK. Uh, Thursday is the first chair and TL's meeting of uh, February. Um, I'll put a specific call out for um, folks in particular steering committee members to uh, take another look at that feedback, see if there's anything else we want to incorporate as far as changes to questions, the template, et cetera. And then um, I'll take the action item to generate and push all that stuff out by Wednesday. Cool. Uh, does anyone else have any comments or thoughts on the in reports at this time? OK, uh, we will move right along. And uh, Christoph, you have the, the the first big block of all the things. I think it was carryover from the, the last meeting with the COCC updates. Yeah, I, I specifically wanted to ask there. I was going through um, some stuff, and uh, there was still an open issue about steering COCC conflict resolution. Uh, I wanted to ask Tim, did you have any updates on where we are with that, if that's being pushed forward? I lost track of that over the holidays as the new COCC came in, we'd started to talk about closing that out and then it stalled. So I will circle back with them and make sure we get that actually close. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Um, so I don't think anyone else has any other, does anyone else have other comments on that or should we just continue to move through? Okay. Uh, if we're moving right along, I'll, I'll go into the next one. Um, I wanted to ping about a uh, formula. They another issue that was like open in the steering repo because um, I was last month. I was kind of looking through. Okay, what are what are action items that we had previously said we were going to do? Make sure following up on those. Another one was formalizing uh, visa support letters into our documentation. Uh, I think Ben wrote an issue about it, but I don't know that we actually formally assigned out that somebody would would take care of that. Um, but I wanted to see if we had any updates that I had missed. Uh, I don't believe anyone did take it. We have some of the this like various bits and pieces, like in the steering private shared drive and some of the other places as a uh, as a starting point. It just uh, hasn't really moved beyond that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
happy to take it. I wasn't sure if we had definitely agreed to that yet because I don't think it came up in a meeting agenda. I think it was like in when um, Nabra and I were looking through backlog stuff uh, when we joined, and I'm not sure where we'd want to put it. Um, I think the intent there was, as Bob mentioned, in steering private uh, locations, we have the starting pieces for this, it seems, but it's entirely by guess or word of mouth that you would think to ask for it. Um, so I'd like to at least attempt to publicly note that this is a possibility. I'm not sure if that's like the community repo or in like steering's charter or like, because the primary concern is visibility. <laughs> Are you um, thinking like a somebody who's looking to build their um their packet visibility so they would understand, oh hey, this is a, a body that I might want to ask for some supporting documentation. Would this be like a kind of a sentence somewhere in one of our um top level docs saying that that's something that we are open to doing? Or are you thinking more than that? Yeah, I'm thinking I don't know, I'm just thinking about it some more now. I think maybe it might be worth putting something like in steering stocks a brief note about it but maybe more importantly a psa to the community so that there's more people in the project that are aware that if they hear that someone has uh this kind of problem that they that, that they know that this is a thing um i'm not sure how often people go read uh really any particular part of our docs if we want something to be really widespread known um, um so th there, there are a couple places where we might build, but that we actually have a list of services on, um, and resources on Kates.dev. So at least when people go there and punch something in, it comes up in search. Um, I feel like though you're probably not searching for it. I, th I think I think if I think about how it would spread better, so far people have learned because they've heard someone else has done it or something like that. But I think if like, you know, our chairs and TLs and broader community know, then if they're talking to someone and, and it comes up that they're working on a piece of package, they might think to mention steering. I'm not sure how likely it is that people are going to like search for it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think honestly, we just pick the location where we want to potentially like have a public policy on it and then you know work on socializing it my best guess would be this the steering repo then just like some mark down there yeah i don't think we need to go into a ton of detail i feel like we just need to mention that we do do this and we should probably highlight that um you know that you need that you that you know steering can only provide context on this that you need to be like a major contributor or something because I, I don't want to it seems like it would be detrimental if we made it sound like we're just handing them out to literally anyone that asks yeah um, but uh, we, we don't want to make it sound like that so I think I feel like that's probably the extent of the text we need is just something that clarifies that uh um we're providing evidence of the of the it, we're helping clarify the large amount of impact that people have uh, as a reference for that, but you still have to have it. Then do you want to just like quickly comment on the issue at open with the sort of like follow up will document it in case steering and go from there? Yeah, I'll sign to that. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions or comments on this? I just want to mention it's really cool that steering has put all this effort into this previously already and that it was something that I didn't realize steering was doing until I joined. Um, so that's a, another reason I want to document it is it's nice to see an example of steering being able to do something helpful instead of just, um, you know, sorting out policy and, and drama and things. Okay. Uh, next thing is a doc that was sent to you the steering list for us to review the SRC member selection process and some updates uh, to what they want to do there. Um, specifically, I want to call it that they are looking to get rid of the SRC associate role. Um, 
change accounts. There's a couple other things in there, but they uh, there's a TLDR sort of like overview of the changes. Um, I have looked at the document briefly, um, but I don't know how many other people have gotten a chance. I know Christoph, you've you've dropped a few comments on there. Yeah, I I I read through it and and reviewed as a as a whole the document, and I I I agree with kind of the reasoning that the the SRC is 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 kind of going through here. I think they're both trying to like they 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 clearly lay out a couple of their goals one being that they want to um reduce the chance of nepotism or conflicts of interest in like the SRC nominating itself and having no kind of oversight over how the SRC is is nominating folks in um there's you know there's part of me that goes like Ew, we're dropping an associates program like that's that's not good like that's the the initial kind of gut reaction um but when you kind of look through and read through some of the thought process behind it of like why the associates program as it's currently designed has not been effective um it all all of it kind of makes sense in in its in it's collective nature. So like, if this is something that the SRC wants to move forward with, I am like, I'm in agreement with it personally. Um, I, I don't have any objections to, to what they're, what they're proposing here. And I'm hopefully, summer. go ahead. I was just gonna say, and, and hopefully that it will be able to kind of look and see, does this change the process have the intended impact um, on SRC membership and participation and all that kind of stuff. Chris, I'll summarize well my thoughts reading the doc. And then the one other thing that I would call out is there is a specific question to us from Tim Alclair on that final selection. Is that through lazy consensus or a vote? And he'd wanted us to make the decision there. Personally, I'm okay with lazy consensus from the SRC. Bob, you're extremely quiet. Yeah, sorry. I uh, forgot to unmute my physical mute button. Um, so I think as a action item for steering as a whole, can we try and, and like review this and come to consensus on it within the next two weeks? I'm happy to do that. I, I previously met with uh, Tim about this and we discussed some of the basics. I think that la I need, I mostly need to look at that, that open question. Um, I, I also, I agree. I feel like this is a very, this is actually a pretty straightforward change and uh, like well argued for and should be a positive improvement to the security response committee. Yeah, I'm I'm generally in support from uh, what I've read. The main thing is just to give a chance to the other steering members that you know aren't here on the call or have been uh, busy lately to do sort of a final review and sign off. I would say let's try and and put the call out like as as within two weeks, but like hopefully sooner rather than later. I, I just know that this one has been languishing a little bit and we yeah. did a public meeting last month um so pushing this one forward i i don't want it necessarily for us to be the bottleneck here um if it's a positive change um so i'd say you know push by end of week um and you know with an ideal hard deadline of two weeks yeah it sounds yeah. good to me yeah, that's okay. a really good point, Christoph. I know Tim's been working on this since at least KubeCon and just couldn't make <laughs> progress last month since we didn't have a meeting. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts or comments on this? Um, I was going to mention, um, 
I don't know if it's in this doc. I've lost it's this doc has existed for a long time, so I've forgotten what's in this doc versus what's in my head. Um in case there are any concerns around um like access to sensitive information, um the SRC did make changes already that give the associate members access to the bulk of the private information. Like they might not be able to change as many things, but they can read enough things that there's not really a, a big distinction between associate and regular versus being on call or not. Um, so I think we we combined uh, two things. One is that we, we wanted more oversight on the membership process for the committee because it is very much just been internally regulated. And I think we've done an okay job there, but I don't know, this is kind of the thing that in our head staring exists for. These are these are not like technical problems. These are human problems that should have some oversight on them. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I like I personally don't have any concerns about like an associate being able to see something or do something that would meaningfully change by that role disappearing. Um, and as just at least one anecdotal point of evidence um, for myself, when I went from associate to full member it was really kind of jarring because I went from like no access to tons of access and I like just really didn't know how to do anything with any of it. So I I found the at least the existing associate role to just not be very helpful. Um, and I think it'd be much better if um, all the information to learn is present without the responsibility of being on call. And then, you know, someone can grow into that role whenever they're ready um, instead of the arbitrary. <laughs> no, you're you're not ready yet, but we haven't done anything to get you ready. So we'll arbitrarily, like one of the full members decides to step down, make you a full member and that works for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if you that, <laughs> think through this. I also apologize. I completely forgot you're on the SRC. <laughs> Otherwise, we're like you know called caught on this immediately with the. <laughs> no, it's it's fine, and, and Rita's here too. Uh, if Rita has any thoughts, but yeah, I I I I I guess nobody else from the SRC was able to join. But I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna join that way. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Um, Rita, did you have anything? Um, no, thanks for sharing the associate experience. Yes, uh, echo plus one on that. Okay, cool. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't have anything else. If anyone has any questions, you know, I'm happy to answer best as I can. Okay, I, I think we're pretty good there. And yeah, I... I apologize. This this stock and everything has has languished for so long. We'll we'll try and we'll try and get it no matter what by end of week. <laughs> okay. Um, next thing is something I wanted to sort of bring to the attention from steering because we've had a lot of um, things going on related to this, and that is regarding the GCP credits and. Uh, cost reduction potential options. Um, something that has come up, um, Ben has more specific details, but we are definitely on a path to to surpassing what uh, we consumed last year. Um, I think you had mentioned getting potentially closer to 4 million instead of 3 million. Yeah, unfortunately, while we had cost reduction actions, we also had pricing changes. Um, on we're in unusually <laughs> badly hit one. Um, the Kubernetes project has used multi-regional storage everywhere, and there was a long coming change from GCP that multi-regional storage pricing was updated to reflect the cost of replicating. Um, so the pricing structure changed, and um, almost nothing moved off of it. The biggest multi-regional storage thing we have is the registry um the other really big one we have is binary downloads but that's those are actually served off of um google's internal spend um so that price went up a lot too but it isn't reflected on this bill um but on our bill um we're way 
way over budget, uh, even worse than last year. Um, we need more measures to for things like getting people to actually move over to the new registry. Um, it, it does have uptake, but it's still only a fraction of the old registry. Yeah, so one of the, the options that has come up in discussion is potentially a policy around aging out old content instead of holding on to everything uh, forever. Like there's people apparently pulling stuff down still from when it was Google containers, still pulling that stuff down today. Um, to, be, to, to be fair, it was still Google containers until sometime in 2020, I think. But um, there are people pulling images that are from like the early days. Yeah. I, I also, I want to clarify before people jump too deep on bike shedding this one, I think this is an important topic for the project, but I don't actually expect uh, aging out old images to have significant cost impact because it's just kind of the long tail anyhow. It's more of like, we don't, we're, we're getting into like 10 years of the project or something at this point, and we don't have a policy for ever retiring hosting things. And so our hosting is always just ever expanding. And besides the um, like the, any costs associated with old artifacts, the infrastructure tooling itself, having a, a pinned only storage is causing some problems. The image promoter needs to go through and sign all images and our set of images only expands. Um, so as we also add more locations that we're storing images for cost reasons, the time to promote images has exploded. Um, and we can do some engineering work around that, but it, it's also worth looking at, I mean, do we want to still be hosting some random image someone pushed eight years ago? Um, I think there's some real trade-offs there. But one that I only just thought of the other night that I need to add to that issue that I want to put on people's minds is that due to the nature of container images, as we've shifted towards hosting our own base images, if we remove those, then building the project at an old commit becomes more challenging. But I'm not sure if that's something we need to prioritize, and I'm not sure what precedent looks like in other projects. Uh, and I think this is something the project should be uh, discussing, even if it's not the highest priority. The cost issue this year it should uh, be relatively pressing, but this probably isn't the uh, angle to fix it. Um, probably other measures that more immediately push people over or cut other costs. Um, there's an effort in Kate Sembra to start adopting uh, AWS and hopefully Fastly infrastructure, for example. Um, it's unclear how quickly we can shift uh, spend, though. <laughs> For what it's worth, I am, you know, broadly and support at least defining some policy of setting, you know, how long we want to retain images around. Um, and sort of, even if it doesn't necessarily match the cost reduction stuff, but the, like setting something, that, whether it's, you know, two years, three years, five years, um, I still think that'd be a good sort of thing to set. Yeah, our other point is as the project has moved over to the new uh, community controlled registry domain and infrastructure and is trying to reset some expectations there, um, this is a good opportunity prior to there being a lot of adoption to to set the tone for what people can expect from it. Um, we've already said that you can't depend on the implementation details on the backends other than it looks like OCI. Um, it would that would be the only reason I would say that this is a more immediate thing is we have a time window here where we can reasonably say we're setting expectations up front for how this uh, infrastructure is going to be used. Um, you know, telling people not to expect things permanently. And that's another reason they should be looking at mirroring. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Okay. Um, I guess we'll leave discussion to that issue. Um, it might also be worth sending out just a general FYI to KDEV to 
get wider community discussion on that going. Um, I don't know if it's if it's necessarily like at a point where it's ready for that, but I do think it needs to be brought to the community as a whole for input. Yeah, it came up in chairs and tech loops before. I think that generally people are okay on the concept. The hard part is the actual policy. Like, how long would you set it, and what sort of rules would you set? The the other thing is, um, I think it actually specifically needs to be brought to release engineering because there's some technical blockers. Um, up until this point, we've intentionally said that you. You know, you cannot delete things that there isn't a mechanism um, by design. So if we decide to start aging out content, then um, that like that actually needs some thought. Right now, all the images are checked into the digests are checked into Git, and uh, if yeah, it's going to be confusing to actually implement this. So I, I think we should probably get their input first. Christoph. So I know that steering cares about this from the perspective of, um, you know, making sure that we are uh, not actively harming users, uh, as well as its budget impacts with the CNCF. Um, but as far as the like specific technical discussions and that kind of stuff, um, I want to make sure that we're having those in the right place. Where is the right forum for those technical discussions? Is that Kate's Infra? meetings is that the release engineering meetings like where's the right where is the right place for people to bring both feedback or questions or concerns uh about this too ben uh so generally uh, for infrastructure things it would be kate's infra but in this case um release engineering owns the tooling that promotes images and the whole life cycle around them so um the technical blockers are going to be on that side um and we need to have uh discussion with them i've cc'd on the issue but we probably uh, also need to take that discussion to their meeting um but in terms of having a discussion around like you know if we were okay with a policy um i think that's a broader community input and it, it's also okay i think if we communicate out uh sort of an intention and don't necessarily meet that right away um because i think the one of the biggest time blockers is before we start deleting things we want to tell people that we intend to and this is what it's going to look like uh, i just want to make sure that it's grounded at least grounded in uh being remotely practical before we do anything and people who work on the image promoter have not commented yet so we need to bring them into it before we get too far with this and i do think steering should be aware just because this will have impact on how people use things and at the same time um i also think we should be helping make sure that efforts related to the the cost issue and uh <laughs> infra are driven forward whether or not we're directly involved in technical uh, conversations um one question for this year might be finding other sources of funding and helping put pressure on that one other just general thing on you know if we can come to a, cons a consensus on a policy at least announcing that policy um to a wide user base would be ideal if we could come to that sort of conclusion by kubecon because i know we could get it mentioned at, on like the keynote stage and elsewhere just to hit a wider audience to communicate that this is happening. Not even to say that, you know, it's like we've started doing this, just like announcing that we are planning this policy and implementing a plan with like this specific release where this is going to go into effect. If we can, like, I, I wouldn't consider it a blocker, but if we can get something in there by that time frame, it'd be very good just to hit a wider audience. Yeah, I think I'd like to poke release folks and then from there um repoke chairs and tech leads and KDEV. Tim. It's still two and a half months away, but I'm gonna guess this is a complicated enough conversation that we don't have something 
resolved exactly to share at KubeCon, but maybe if we acknowledge that sooner than later, we could highlight that this may be a change coming in a way that it's a, a request for stakeholder input because we we know we have a lot of people out there doing odd things. And if, if we haven't have 10,000 people sitting in a keynote audience, that might be a way to get them to actively give us our uh, more feedback so we understand some things we might end up breaking through a choice. Yeah. Um, if we do want to do that, I would say we definitely want a issue or form or something to direct them towards. Um, just so it's not happening yeah, yeah. like all over the place. Okay. Does anyone else have any other thoughts or comments on this issue? Okay. Uh, we will move to the, the next thing. Um, and this is something we've talked about in steering a few times, and it's come up in the chair and tech leads meeting now multiple times, is the idea of actually defining a sub-project lead. Um, we sort of have like sort of the idea of sub-project owner sort of matches to what a lead would be. But at this point, there tends to be just like, you know, a sub-project might have multiple owner's files and various people across the board in there. But there's usually only a couple people that are an actual point of contact that sort of have the full knowledge of that sub-project. Um, and both for them being a, you know, potential point of contact if someone has a question, but it's also just a general other stepping stone into like a, a recognized stepping stone into sort of like a, a potential future leadership position. Um, so say someone happens to be a sub project lead over um, multiple sub projects in a SIG, then, you know, it's, it would be pretty obvious that they might make a good candidate for a TL. Um, and there's been um, general support of something like this from the other chairs and TLs and the, the other meetings. So I just wanted to, to bring it here officially to talk about it um, and sort of think of potential next steps if it is something we want to go with. Christoph? Um, yeah, so my thoughts, I, I'm generally supportive of the concept um i i think adding adding and defining uh more rungs on our contributor ladder um i think is a positive change because i think it's unclear i think to some folks of like hey i'm an approver where do i go from here um how do i go and continue to build influence in the project how can i uh, go from being like a an approver or a sub project owner into SIG leadership. Um, that was and, specifically called out in the chair and TL meeting. <laughs> yeah. So I think like the concerns, like the problem statement that that um, is happening here. Like I I see it as like a clear problem statement and a, a, a real problem. Um, and I think the proposed solution of adding this extra rung, defining it as a, a named role, um, and then allowing SIGs to roll that out as they see fit. Um, I am, yeah, I'm I'm in support of, of, of all that. I think it as far as next steps, it would seem to me that it would be like a um a PR to our governance docs with specific language. And then um setting a consensus period and requesting feedback um and in particular from that chairs and tls kind of group uh, of like hey if we had a role defined as this uh would you find that useful would that be something that you would um uh that would be valuable for 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 your sig um and and get feedback that way I wish we still had Mo, but I'm curious if Rita, if any of this kind of resonates relative. Oh, wait, you are still there, Mo. Sorry, um, Zoom was not showing your, your picture. Do you think this would have changed anything relative to, to the change earlier we we're discussing? For SRC, like having extra rungs? 
Um, yeah, I, I think in general, like SRC is weird because like it's like, you know, it's a closed community. There's not, I mean, there's no public meetings of it at all. Um, so it's kind of grown organically, like even much more so than other SIGs and their processes. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, like in general, the conversation here really resonates with me from like SIGOT's perspective. Like I've been having a lot of conversations with folks about like, you know, like someone in the community asked me like, Hey, like, how do I climb the ladder? And I was like, I'm pretty sure I was the last one that climbed the ladder. And I think I pulled it up with me. So I don't think there's any ladder to climb. So unless I like come up with a way to make a ladder come down to you, there is none, <laughs> which is, I mean, I know I'm being silly, but like that was roughly like how I felt about it. So yeah, this, um, one of the pieces of feedback I got is much easier to like promote someone if they're like working in a targeted space because you can be like, like look at all these things that are like related and they make sense. And you can say, okay, this person's done a ton of work with certs. So they can probably approve cert related changes to Kubernetes or something, you know, something like that. Uh, so having it in like sub projects probably would be really meaningful and helpful there, I think. Um, yeah, and so like Rita's writing in chat, you know, being, pro I, I'm assuming you mean like secret CSI store driver, like I think that helped Rita ramp up. Um, but yeah, we, at least in Sigoth, we we do have a pretty significant deficit of people that we could reasonably promote. So yeah, I'm all for having more structured and documentation and details for how we how we do this in a way that's sustainable over time. Because I mean, eventually people will leave, right? That's sort of inevitable. Yep. Sergey. Yeah, I, I really like this change because uh, it solves this problem of only two TLs, uh, according to governance documents, should, should be on SIG. Uh, I mean, two or three, I think, as a, a, a current suggestion is. And uh, in Signal, like Signal is huge and we have various areas. So we have a few candidates we want to uh, recognize somehow, and uh, uh, this definitely will help. Um, one question, though, is um, what would be the is there anything we can do on enhancement uh, repository? Like even today, we have this uh, discrepancy between chairs and SIG and TLs. Uh, we allow all SIG leads to approve caps. Uh, so like current structure doesn't uh, differentiate between chairs and TLs. Uh, but at the same time, uh, charter doesn't like, I think according to charter, it's not supposed to be chairs. It's supposed to be only TLs approving uh, enhancements. And same with, uh, TLs of sub projects, uh, since we don't have any clear differentiation which sub projects this enhancement belongs to, we cannot grant permissions to approve sub project uh, uh, enhancements as well. So maybe some thinking can be done there uh, to improve the structure of enhancement uh, folder or enhancement folder structure. Um, this may help. Uh, can, I, can I get in quick? Ben for yeah you you actually got your hand back up first okay um one quick on um the part of the reason why chairs and tls both have approve in there is because technically right now um in the absence of a tl all responsibilities roll up to the chair um this is something we do want to split off and we want to make them explicit named roles um so that way you know chairs are one thing and TLs are another just because they tend to get uh, conflated together quite a bit. Um, and one other thing that I have encouraged, I know others have encouraged, but is rarely done is one of the reasons for breaking caps and enhancements into their own folder is because that folder can then have its own owner's file. So as a SIG lead or, you know, as a, as a TL, if you want to fully delegate um, a specific enhancement to another team, you could do that through the owner's file. Um, or, you know, if you don't want to necessarily do approvers, you could at least, you know, set the, you know, 
the sub project, lead, you know, future sub project leads or whatever as the first stage reviewers for that group um, before potentially bumping it up to a TL for final review. Sorry, Bob, just a clarifying question as I'm taking notes. Is, are you saying that can be done today with the current? That, that, can, that can be done today. Um, just no one, <laughs> I've only seen, I think I've only seen it done once where someone has created an owner's file in the specific enhancement uh, folder for a specific enhancement. Um, and I, I really wish that more leads would take advantage of that. Um, and just being able to delegate work. Um, well, again, they don't necessarily have to do approve, but at least being able to delegate um, some, some of that. Ben? It'd also be worth double checking. I don't think we have any significant blockers, possibly no blockers today to if a SIG wanted to have like folders for sub projects within their SIG folder and put an owner's files there and then put kept folders underneath that. Uh, I think that's, I think that'd be fine. The only thing that is kind of set, centralized in kept is having the um, production readiness review uh, metadata, and that's in um, like a separate folder. We might have to check the like PRR linter to make sure it supports having additional nesting, but I think if any changes would be required, it would be pretty small. And um, as Bob mentioned, we, we've already had very limited but precedent of people putting in their own owners. Um, yeah. I, I also want to address one other comment about the like number of weeds that uh, I went through this pre, uh, recently in SIG testing and spoke to steering members before I was in steering and just clarified that it is, it's a suggestion, the number of weeds. Um, you can have more in, in our case we do for the moment. And I think it's useful for SIGs to to um, to try exploring the boundaries a little bit and see what works. So like if SIGNode is interested in having sub project owners uh, approve KEPs separately, like that's something that you could go try um, and we can see if that's something we want to suggest more generally. Yeah. Uh, one other, just Christoph, to address your comment in chat or in the doc. Um, it has been brought up to the chair and TL meeting um, several times now. I, I just don't know if it needs to become like a recurring item that we put on the top to be like, hey, you can do this. Hey, you can do this. Um, yeah, I was capturing Tim's uh, uh, suggestion in chat that it that it be brought up again. But yeah, okay. like, it, it might Maybe. be, even if there's, I don't know if there's like a SIG chair TL tips and tricks guide that we have somewhere. Because as, as I, I think there's a few things that kind of fall into that category of like, we know they're there, but every so often we still get a question about like, hey, can we do this? But the functionality is already there. So the, that tips and get, it does exist. It's in the K community repo under contributing chairs and tech leads directory. But a lot of people I, don't know about that directory either. I should be reading <laughs> our own documentation more myself. <laughs> Maybe this goes in the enhancements lead for the release team in their handbook to remind people is there collating stuff that they could do that. That would be a little more one-on-one. -on -one. They could enable it. Yeah. Actually, one other just general comment, and I, I've said this before too, um, we are not doing a good a job of taking advantage of the reviewer role. Um, a lot of places it is the, the reviewer is both a re reviewer and approver. Like the list is exactly the same. And uh, like I, I have encouraged in out of band conversations, the chair and TLS meeting, um, that we should be using that more. Um, people shouldn't be afraid. Like if a person has been fairly competent, um, and they've reviewed other PRs, like I, I don't see a blocker to adding them as as a reviewer. Um, it's it's just not something like I see it as, as just a general problem. I think it's a little bit harder in Kebs, but I yeah, like generally agree. You, you know, I have a change uh, coming uh, probably this week that we approve for the workflow, and I'm planning to put a PSA out to that effect. Um, the community is very rarely actually using the reviewers field at this point, and that's one of the ways I feel like the ladder was drawn up behind. <laughs> 
well around the time that I came in when I came into getting owners around the project we actually followed the community ladder of you you, you start contributing you become a reviewer then you, after you've had a fair bit of reviewing and some contributions you become an approver propose that at some point maybe you become a lead somewhere um that that like second step after you start contributing or you become a reviewer i almost never see that happening anymore um and instead i see a lot of like after someone somehow manages to become extremely trusted in a sig they join like sig whatever review approve alias and are suddenly an approver in like 50 places um and that makes people really hesitant to add them I think it I've seen that it's both been really rare to do scoped owners anymore and it's been really rare to just toss people and reviewers if they're interested and recognize that it doesn't actually deem any power other than getting spammed by GitHub. <laughs> you have the same LGTM power any member of the community has. You don't gain approval, but you get first crack at taking a review and hopefully taking some of the load off. And I think that's part of the reason that our approvers are overloaded as well, is that they're doing all the first pass review. Um, so you can expect a, a PSA about that probably this afternoon, uh, along with announcing a small change to the approval bot to encourage that. So I have one other thought, but it's sort of on the original idea of subproject lead. Does anyone else have any other thoughts on this? Okay. Um, one other thing that the idea of having a named role um, is it actually helps with employers and justifying things because it's no longer like, hey, I'm just this owner and these various things. Um, it's kind of hard to justify time and things like that for, you know, the actual, like the, the importance of it. Um, but named roles, like if you can say explicitly that you're a sub project lead and can point to something, um, feedback has just generally been, it's, it's easier for people to get that justified more upstream time and in like, and company recognition for, time spent in that role. If yeah, we I can't, can't formally that. recognize it. How do we expect the person's boss to recognize it? Exactly. I've also had back before that sometimes when people are working on things in open source, it can be really hard um to condense without participating yourself uh like who's actually leading this sort of thing and someone can be highly involved and just have no evidence that that they can really definitively say like i've been leading this um i think uh as much as possible we want to put out carrots like this uh i think sometimes we talk about things like oh we're going to delete old images or whatever but that almost always the thing that works is the carrot not the stick And this is a great carrot. Does anyone else have uh, thoughts or comments? OK, um, that takes us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other items that people want to talk about? Maybe we have seven minutes left. <laughs> Okay, uh, then I think that's it. Thanks everyone. Um, and I will see you around all the usual places. <laughs>